Hey, good day, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. Good everything. So the news is uh, John Kratz got in touch with me, and they're changing uh, Consum World. Yep, the Consum World website uh, is going to change, and he says here, he says he wanted to alert everybody that uh, they're moving to a new social platform in the coming days, weeks. So I've been privy to this. I've seen it. It's really awesome. Facebook, super easy type thing. It looks like a Facebook thing. So the site will be closing down and will not be accessible any longer as it's getting fully replaced with a new platform they feel will be, be will best serve the community over the long term. So contents from the, the CSW site uh, will not be migrating to the new site. So he says, if you got any pictures or anything you want, take it out now, all right? And I would say do it ASAP because uh, things are moving pretty fast. Okay, so the ACDC is the Armchair Dragoons Digital Convention from the 15th to the 17th of January, 2021. Uh, so far, Moe's there, Academy Games, I'm there, Artwolf is there, uh, DGS Games, Lock and Load's there, Ad Astra Games is there, and the Wargaming Company is there so far. Registration is now open. And, guys, it's another con. I miss cons. I'm going to be there. I think I will be interviewing Brian Train, fellow Canadian. And um, I forget who else. I know uh, they put me with someone here. Brian Train and, I don't know, probably Uva. But anyways, guys, have a good show. Rock on. Roger B. McGowan and crew, C3I Magazine, number 34. To say this is one of the best wargaming magazines around is a huge understatement. Anyways, check it out. The new C3I, number 34, is out. Lots of stuff, over 100 pages of stuff, plus a game called Kursk, The Tigers Are Burning 1943 by Trevor Bender, which includes a 22 by 34 inch map and 114 counters. Check it out. Compass Games and Devil Boats. PT Boats in the Solomons. PT Boats in the Solomons is a solitaire tactical level war game. You, as commander, will lead a squadron of four U.S. Navy PT Boats on nightly missions against Japanese forces in the Solomon Islands during the summer of 1943. Canvas Temple Publishing and Watch on the Rhine, the Siegfried Line Campaign, 1944 to 1945. Counter-offensive short scenarios provide the historical disposition of both sides as they were historically on the 16th of December, 44, at the start of the Battle of the Bulge. Also for Canvas Temple Publishing, Atlantic Wolves. Atlantic Wolves is a solitaire game based on the important World War II naval campaign. It covers the decisive part of the campaign, August 42 to May 43. The player assumed the role of Admiral Karl Dönitz, controls a German Kriegsmarine, and tries to achieve success against the Allied, played, or the Allies, played by the game system. High-flying dice games and a cold and resolute fight, the Battle of Narvik, April to June 1940. This is a game designed by Paul Rohrbaugh. Paul keeps pumping out games like crazy, man. I mean, seriously. So this game, the German invasion of Denmark and Norway, Operation Weisrumbung. Yeah, I destroyed that. Compass Games! No Mother Without! North Korea in Crisis and Cold War from Compass Games. Check out that Kickstarter. It ends today. Assault Games and Assault Red Horizon 41. This is a Kickstarter and this game 
is actually funded, but it's going to end on Sunday. It's got three more days to go today. We are Thursday. And this is a game. It's a new tactical war game system made in Germany by a company called Assault Games. Check them out. Sounds cool. Compass Games and Brothers at War 1862 is a quick play tactical war game exploring Civil War Brigade Command. This is a quadri game that means four games, each featuring a 22 by 34 inch map covering the battles from 1862, Antietam, South Mountain, Mill Springs, and Bloody Valverde. Carrier Battles Philippine Sea is a solitaire simulation of the largest carrier battle in history fought during the invasion of Saipan, June 44. This game is based on carrier victory games made in 1990, but is a new standalone game featuring nine scenarios designed by John Southard. This is Tony from Tony's Board Life, and Dan Van County asked me to do a quick segment on what I have on the table. Uh, currently, the game that I am playing this week is Liberty or Death, the fifth series, the fifth of the coin series from GMT. And here is why I have chosen it. Liberty or Death by GMT is the fifth um, volume in the coin series by Harold Buchanan. It is by far one of my favorite and is currently the one I have on my table. Granted, it is the virtual table. I'm using Vassal, uh, but the Vassal module is very, very good. Um, and why I've got it on the table is, one, is I really like the coin games, and plus, I love the topic. The Revolutionary War, by far, is one of my favorite topics uh, to game and to research and read upon. Currently, we are looking at the map of... Uh, Liberty or Death, and it is by far one of my favorite things I love about the game. The artwork on this game is phenomenal. It is a very pretty map. You could almost uh, frame this and mount this map. I absolutely love the map. Uh, it has been, it is extremely, extremely beautiful. And the map art is by Terry Leeds, so I want to give him compliments. But I also like the game because it's kind of from a different perspective of the Ma American Revolution. It's it's kind of more of the perspective uh, from the British side in the fact that they are gaining support and the rebels or the patriots or the continentals in this case are actually the opposition. What's interesting about it coming from uh, teaching American history, it's a different it's a diff definitely a different view uh, by all means for sure. Another reason why I like this game is it is different from previous coin games in that there is a lot more battle to it. There is actually a battle sequence, so it equals out to you actually battle between the two. There's some dice rolling and somewhat of a CRT, not quite, uh, but it definitely creates casualties as, uh, as we've got seen down here. Uh, there are casualties, and the casualties actually do a play role in the uh, winning or losing of the game. Now, who would I recommend this to? Well, one, if you're a fan of all the, any of the coin games, I recommend this very highly. It is uh, a slight difference, a light, slight variation in some cases on the typical, at least the first four coin games. Uh, uh, Fire in the Lake is definitely one that uh, had tweaked even more changes. Uh, but this has some difference, especially with the battle sequence. If you're interested in the Revolutionary War, because there's a lot of history, they give history behind the cards and why they're important. Plus, also, I recommend if you're trying to introduce uh, Euro gamers into conflict resolution games, this is a great way to introduce them. The mechanics are very, very simple, but the actual strategy gets a little more difficult. So Liberty or the Death is the game I have on this table. I highly recommend it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and will visit my channel to see my current playthrough of Liberty or Death. Kilroy 
was here has a new intro very nice robert plus he takes a look at exploration of strategic level french and indian war games starting with 1754 conquest of french and indian war from academy games plus check out the way he opens up his video he says hi everybody something something and happy new year check out the different tone between the beginning of the phrase and when he hits happy new year see my musical ear picked it up he's he's not happy listen to the tone of the happy new year robert you tell me if you were happy or not don't lie to me boy hello all and happy new year happy new year you see is it me or is the guy not happy is he putting us on because the year started off pretty incredible Mo of Mo's Game Table is checking out C3i, the new magazine number 34, and also doing a live playthrough of Firebase Vietnam. And thoughts on the game? Jay of Point Dexter's Games, or Point Dexter Games, has lost his mind, or I should say, a different take on a advertising channel that he's doing. I don't even know what I'm saying. He's it's London's burning dance call. Check it out. The guy's crazy, man. And the great Stuka Joe gives us an inside look at his studio and his mind frame when he films. Blast Pop looks at Khartoum from Decision Games, Hand of Destiny Games series. Wargaming is doing Shores of Tripoli, the solo bot playthrough, 1801 to 1803. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to the Centurions Review, the punk rock band of Wargame Review. Institution's first game I've reviewed on my website this week is Caesar's War. It's one of the mini games from Decision Games. It's about the conquest of Gaul from 58 to 52 BC plays very similar to Belisarius' war because they share the same basic rule set, just the map and units are different and the uh, some scenario rules for it, but it, it's all right. On our YouTube channel, we have done a first look at Desert Rats, a Panzer Grenadier game. It's platoon level combat in World War II. It also has one other game in there I discovered while I was doing the unboxing, so that was a pleasant surprise. And then on YouTube, my friend Len did an overview of Cataphract, a game from GMT Games. And the last thing we did on YouTube was um, The Chronicles of Davis, episode number five. It's my solo D&D campaign. Uh, this time they went up against dinosaurs and an intellect devourer. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. And Wayne Hansen in his Let's Play segment plays Worthington Publishing's Stalingrad Besiege, the game designed by Lou Pulsifer. Clark Commando 1983, Mark Ruggiero is continuing Compass Games, Fall of the Third Reich, Part 4. Lots of rule references, he says. And Jan Heinemann of Let's Play History is on vacation. He only has four videos out. He's playing this Tropical 6 Viva la Revolution and also Greek Wars, Imperiums, Greek Wars, I said that. Yeah, and Fields of Glory Empire. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Jan Heinemann. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back to reality with the Farmer's Aid. I mean the Player's Aid. They are unboxing Rostov 41. 
published by Multiman Publishing, also reviewing Combat Commander, a Chad Jensen game published by GMT, and they're unboxing another GMT game, but this time a Bruno Sinigallo game called A Time for Trumpets. And again, they're unboxing Dana Core from Gale Force Wind. Gale Force Wind. No wonder it smells so bad over here because there's so much Gale Force Wind. Gale Force 9! And the Hugh Hefner of War Games, Wardy Robe! Todd plays World War II. Check out Todd's teachings in War Gaming Bootcamp, where he checks out a lot of bolt action stuff. And also, miniature building. Check it out. Keith, I mean Keith. Todd! And my brother from another mother, Riccardo Mazzini, with vlog number 63 checks out an Italian game called Repubblica Ribelle, meaning the Rebel Republic. That was a little difficult for me to say. But anyways, Ricardo, ladies and gentlemen. Seek Out and Play gives us a power video on by Stealth and Sea, a game published by DVG, designed by David Thompson and Nicola Sagini. And here, Seek talks about turn sequence. Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer announces giveaway winner number four. Also has a video on a review of Tiny Epic Mechs. Plays review through part one of For Glory and gives us his opinion and nonsense in writing. A game for gamers made by gamers by Flying Pig Games. And Chef Jean-Pierre wishes us a happy new year and also is demonstrating how to make the most amazing meatloaf you've ever tasted. Trust him, he says. Now that's a face that screams, I'm crazy. And the chief of bonding with board games is taking a look at Mike Denson's Airborne Over Europe in the series The Last hundred yards plus unboxing c3i magazine issue number 34 that's the big one this week counterproductive games checks out sales of glory uss constitution and also an overview of war by sale jk war games checks out aliens another glorious day in decor it's a review and Tony of Tony's Board Life continues his SPQR Battle of the Bagradas Plains, Turn 3 Part 1, and a What's in the Box Kickstarter doohickey. Joel Toppin checks out Academy Games' Mare Nostrum, Empires. And the man famously known as Callendale, Enrico Viglino, has a couple of vids out. He reviews Gormenghast and starts... Omaha Beachhead, the battle for the Bocage, an old Victory Games game playthrough. And on the big board, Kevin Sharp taking a look at his mail surprise and also quick musings on leadership in war games. The soft spoken but formidable foe, Jonathan Townsend. But no, and it's not a soft spoken, it's Jonathan Townsend's son doing an unboxing of High Frontier. Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome. Dan Parnassus has asked me to provide a short rundown of what has appeared on Ardwolf Slayer this week, so here we go. On Monday, we revisited the counter-clipping stream. Our topic this week was why we play war games in particular. Great fun was had by all, and I intend to continue doing these counter-clipping streams as long as people haven't gotten tired of watching me clip counters and blather for two hours. Traveler Tuesday returned on Tuesday with a look at the classic Traveler Bundles of Holding, which are available right now through Bundle of Holding. There is a deadline on this, so if you are interested in these classic Traveler PDF bundles, you should definitely get in on them now. On Wednesday, we unboxed a new arrival for King and Country, the latest ASL release from Multiman Publishing. This contains the British Order of Battle. On Thursday, we returned to our intermittent wargame storage series with a look at the SPI flat tray, including the game Outreach. 
Many plans are afoot for this week on Aardwolf's Lair as well. On Monday, we will be resuming our counter-clipping activities. The topic this time around will be wargame complexity writings and why they are total nonsense. For Traveler Tuesday, we'll be having an in-depth look at interpreting the Universal World Profile. How are you supposed to make sense of these randomly generated numbers? Well, I'll explain how in this video. On Wednesday, we'll be unboxing The Confederate Rebellion, a release from White Dog Games, and it is a solitaire game about the American Civil War. There may be additional videos next week, so stay tuned. I'd like to thank Dan Padidio for giving me this opportunity to talk about what's happened on Ardwolf's Lair this week and next week. Thanks for watching, and happy wargaming. An AJ Toy and B of Hexes and Soldiers has two videos out, the first one being Axes and Allies. D-Day, he's probably playing on that fandangled map he's created, and also Gadarian's Blitzkrieg from MMP. Combat Board Games goes out of his usual fare and plays Missile Command on the Atari 2600 at difficulty 1. And Voynek TV episode 517 is checking out The Lost Valley, The Siege of Dien Bien Phu. Counterattack is continuing his playthrough of Ukraine 43, a game designed by Mark Simonich. ACDC, which stands for Armchair Dragoons Digital Convention. Registration is open right now. This is happening the 15th to the 17th of January, 2021. I'll be there. Mole be there. Academy Games is going to be there. Ardwolf's going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. Are you going to be there? Another show! Oh, let me turn on the lights here. Alright. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please comment down below. This is really strange here. Oh. Anyways, please support this channel. It helps. And also, have a great weekend, don't despair, don't worry about it, you know what I'm talking about, and ciao baby.
And I'm Grant. Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome Dan Panucci as Dan Palerno for giving Dan Panchetta, Dan Prosciutto, Dan Pancheesy, um, Dan Pistolero, um, Dan Pinocchi, Dan Panducci, Dan Spanducci, Dan Panlavelev, Dan Ponitowski, Dan Panolio, Dan Parcheesy, Dan Pinocchio. I'd like to thank Dan Panicotta for giving me this time to talk about what's new and upcoming at Art Wolf's Lair. Till next time, happy gaming.